But then, and really more interestingly, to me anyway, is the human constraints. What kind of user interface works for the kinds of people that we're targeting? Facebook is, really has a difficult problem here because they're targeting everybody on the planet. You know, there's nobody who they don't want to be a Facebook user, all the way from someone who's never really used a computer before, all the way up to the people who work at Facebook who, you know, live, breathe, eat, and poop computers. So how do they make a user interface that will work for the people, that will be understandable to the people that need to use it? What looks good? What's attractive? What is the, something that people will want to use? What's a really clean approach? Google, it's said, oftentimes, um, has an approach that is very compelling because it's super simple. When you go to the Google homepage, it just says Google, and then there's a box, and then a little button that says, am I feeling lucky? Right? That's a very simple user interface, and they like it. It's very clean as opposed to maybe a news site like CNN.com that's got a very busy, a very fancy, a very complicated and intricate user interface with lots of controls all over the place. Okay, so what works for people, and that we call usability, is it possible for them to use it? Can they find their way around it? What looks good, what's going to be attractive, and people are going to be compelled or, or encouraged to use it? Uh, what's consistent with people's expectations? There's lots of applications that we use, lots of websites that we use. Do we, in our case, want to just mimic the way everybody does it, or do we want to break new ground and do it in a very different way? That's all about um, how are we going to meet people's expectations? How are we going to set their expectations? How are we going to meet those expectations? So it's all about interacting with individuals, and that's really difficult, very, very difficult. And then finally, and maybe most importantly for the user interface from the human aspects is how does that user interface communicate to the people who are going to use it, telling them what's possible and what they should do next? How does it have sort of a conversation? And that's probably the way that I like to look at user interfaces. The best is that they're a conversation. You come to a page and you're asking yourself, what can I do? What's possible? What are the things that I should be thinking about right now? And a good user interface will suggest things to you. It'll, it'll say, this is probably what you want to do. Sometimes it suggests it like the thing that's happening now in the user interface of Facebook, which is kind of a pain, is it's in your face. Right now there's new options for controlling the privacy of posts, and every time I go to post, I get this little pop-up box saying, you should think about this. Right? Well, mm, you know, that's kind of a pain to have that pop up in my face all the time, even though I understand it's a new feature, they want to inform me about it, and hopefully eventually they'll make it a little bit more streamlined. But that's an example of Facebook trying to tell me what's possible and what I should be thinking about right now. So those are the human aspects of user interface design. There are technical aspects that are all about the constraints and how do we meet the constraints. There are human aspects all about how do we communicate with the people who are using this application and how do we get them to know what they can do, be happy to do it, be easily led from feature to feature to feature of our application and, and be attracted to our application as well.